You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. Hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey there, Helix fans. Oh, uh, 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 uh. thank you for joining us. Yeah, this is the Helix After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. This is Season 1, Episode 3. It is called 247. I'm Ira Glass. I'm not Ira Glass. <laughs> I am Matt Lieberman. Uh, joining me on the panel, we have a fantastic crew of characters. Uh, the fantastic and talented Miss Liz Rishmaui. Hey, guys. Mr. Zach Wilson. Hey, hey. And the fantastic Mr. Stephen Lemieux. I know the way to San Jose. How do you get there? <laughs> Just listen to the song. Something about parking cars and pumping gas. No, no, no. That's how packing you I, cars. packing cars. I think you get there via helicopter through the Arctic. I think so too. You get there every time. Every time. You go south, guys. Every time you blow up a satellite, an angel gets its wings. You actually have to <laughs> assemble a crew and have at least one dick army guy and fat security guard. It's and true. Monkeys. Oh, fat Dan and monkeys. <laughs> monkeys. Monkeys. So oh, many monkeys. I know. Oh, we should start a monkey's jar on this show, but I would lose all no. my money. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I say monkeys, oh I put God. 50 But just the <laughs> image of a monkey's jar is fantastic. <laughs> right? Well, monkeys running around in a jar. In a jar, a jar what full we, of monkeys. Monkey that, in a, well, they're normally in a barrel. I guess so. Hey, guys, I'm looking at this clock. It says two minutes, and we're already <laughs> off topic. <laughs> Listen, monkeys are the topic. So this like, is that's all there is. episode two or three. Now. It's episode three. We had a two-parter as the uh, as the pilot. Pilot. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, so it's day three at the facility, and things are tense. Uh, looking up. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, we've, yeah. Well, we've got, it, Peter turned himself in, first of all, so that's a good thing. Although, I'm going to call it right now and say nefarious purposes. He turned himself in. He's saying, help me, help me, but it's just to get closer to everyone else. It's a ruse. But is it? I don't know. Well, a little that's bit what a closer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to think that it Peter is fighting against. I still am operating under the theory that the virus is conscious or like activating a consciousness yeah. that is forcing him to do things, and this is hit actual Peter fighting against the virus. Yeah, I'd like. I, that. I would go with that just because. I mean. Like, if we, we skip ahead a little bit and we we see the way that um, one of the other, now they're called Vectors. Right. Um, the doctor, what was her name? Um, Sule, Suleimani. Suleimani. Like, uh, we flash forward a little bit into the episode where she was saying, they made me do it, I didn't mean to, and she's walking very slowly. It, it's totally different from how Peter reacted when he was saying, help me. Like, yeah. I really feel like... I almost feel like he's the only person so far who is more conscious than everyone else who has seems to be infected. Yeah, he seems to have, you know, a more uh, developed version of the virus, one that's ge allowing him to have higher brain function as well as the advanced physical capabilities that we've been seeing the other vectors have. You want me to scare the hell out of you? Yes. All right. Well, let's look at it another way. Um, he knows his brother works for the CDC. He knows how the CDC works. In his life. Yeah. And now let's just assume that the parasite knows everything about that too. So he would know that if he turned himself in, they would try to form something, they would try to form a cure, and they would try to quarantine people all together in a big room that has like 30 cots next to each other where people are bound to turn violent at any second because that's the safe thing to do. So maybe this was all just a plan to get around more people to conf infect them more to take over the facility. Dun, dun, dun. I love this theory. I like that. It's I do. great. I, except for the one thing that they are securely locked in a basement. So if you wanted to just like close them off down there, right? Yeah. It would be the easiest way to prevent them from getting out further. Well, here's the thing, right? Dude, those cots can like break through doors, though. 
No, no, they, no, can't. they can't. This is the well, let's see. It's called Level R. Level it was, R. It was used to con to to use to con do controlled fusion, which sounds very explodey. Yeah. Yes, that's not a word. Now it is. Yeah. Um, and it's been abandoned for five years. It's double plated steel. It's concrete, and as quoted, nothing can get in or out, which I feel is like a huge foreshadowing for yes, there are things that are going to get out or in. But well, but here's the thing, right? <laughs> they think that they have the virus contained at the end of this episode. They think that they have full containment, but the fact is, this test, this cockamamie test that Doctor Doctor Sarah Jordan came up with mm -hmm. using right? jellyfish, using jellyfish, gel which like where did she get jellyfish in the Arctic? Listen, that I, stuff's like it's it's readily available at all. I don't know. I would imagine it's the, it's glowy. Okay, Arctic it, mark. It, it made sense. Arctic. I mean, it's a massive uh, science facility. Yes. Yeah. So there's gonna be some jellyfish somewhere. I mean, they do, after all, have monkeys. So <laughs> oh you know, of I'll course they have jellyfish. I'll give them the jellyfish. Yes. If we were concerned about the realisticness right. of the jellyfish availability, rate. right? So let's just let's jump in. Let's talk about Alan. Uh, obviously still very shaken up over the events of what's happened so far. He hasn't really had a chance to sleep. He comes in and he finds Julia uh, sprawled out on the ground in her shower, in her towel for some reason. Um, <laughs> I figured Alan threw it place. over. But it was like, it wasn't just thrown over. It was like tucked in. It was like perfectly arranged. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys uh, didn't see the, the, the before of the episode, right? Where like before? it shows him like looking like, around and like sneaking into the girl's bathroom at like 4 a.m. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Julia, I haven't seen you in a while. Julia, Julia. Here, put this towel on. Julia. Ignore that I'm in here and just, you know, <laughs> what's wrong? Ignore me. <laughs> Venture Brothers, no. I feel yes. like you guys have um, like way too much experience with this. That seems a little like, you know, a little bit too much about that. I don't think that this proves that we have any experience. We've just dealt with monkeys a lot. Yes, ah. monkeys. 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 <laughs> this so, is the hardest show for me to review because I'm so delighted by the prospect of monkeys, even frozen ones, that I cannot maintain my concentration for more than 30 seconds. So at she a time. wakes up from the Thank spontaneous you. roofie of infection. Yes. And also known as face munching. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something else. But it's. That sounded worse than I meant it to. Yep. But, <laughs> <laughs> so she wakes up. She's all groggy because she's trying to remember what the hell actually happened. Yes. And at this point, I'm trying to think, does she remember it clearly? Or is she really just kind of think it's a dream at this point? Because it really seemed like later in the episode is when yeah. she kind of had it like come to the realization, oh, this actually kind of happened. I think that she remembered. I think that she knew it the whole time. Too. And she was she was afraid to say anything because it's still a sore subject between her and Alan because of the sleeping with Peter thing. Well, I, I think it's it's a, you're, there's a lot of times this stuff happens to you, you don't want to admit it even to yourself. Yeah. And the, she talks about that, like you have to admit it. She had, goes through that with, um, with uh, Sarah mm -hmm. and where she's guilt tripping her. Well, there is a part where she she's basically losing it, and she has like that whole nightmare kind of daydream in the mirror, and she was saying, "Don't get sick, do not get sick." Yeah. So I feel like you know what you said, Matt, is that I think that when she woke up, I think she was very delirious. So maybe at that point she was unsure what had happened, but I also think that you know you she didn't want to admit it. And I just, you know, like, and I think at halfway through the episode, she did realize, but she just wasn't saying anything to anybody. So yeah. that's that. That's that. But, <laughs> you know, poor Alan, on, on the other hand, he's not being armed with proper information. And he's trying to set up level R. He's contending with uh, Hataki and Fat Dan. Um, <laughs> we're only going to refer to him as Fat Dan. Not getting tired of that ever. He shoots people. He does. Okay. So Dr. Suleimani, soon after they're, they get into L level R, she comes up to them just like Peter, and she's trying to get help. She's like, help me. They made me. I didn't want to. And Fat Dan immediately shoots her. Um, immediately shoots her. I mean, she wouldn't stop, though, guys. Come on. Like, yeah. I would have I shot the bitch, too. <laughs> There's no reason <laughs> to call her a B-word, Stephen. I mean, after last episode, I kind of thought she was kind of a bitch. Okay. I mean, the way they escaped, like, it was really kind of like... True. That and also, like, you're not a doctor to poor Sarah. Yeah. To, like, yeah. Prove to her okay, her so she's not the nicest person. I mean, I, we'll get to it later. I'll, yeah. I'll talk Fine. about it later. But uh, she, he shoots her, and Alan goes immediately into awesome, kick-ass, life-saving doctor mode, mm. and he pulls out her bullet with his bare hands. 
Um, he was just packing it. Did he pull the bullet out? He pulled the bullet oh, out and threw it away. Damn. And then packed in the wound with, you know, some uh, some cloth there. She's infected, man. Be yeah, careful. no. He yeah, reached I... into black Open blood. Uh, black blood being the, <laughs> the, being the <laughs> virus. Uh, and with bare hands, right? He mm. could have been infected. Yes. He might be infected now. Although probably not probably because this show has to run for early. a few years and we can't have all of our leads getting infected in the first three episodes. <laughs> yeah. This is true. Well, well is this show going to run for a few years or is it a one season thing? It's not a miniseries. It's not a miniseries. This is intended to go on. That's what's so fascinating to me about this show is it does not seem designed to last. Yeah, it seems like it has a planned obsolescence. Yeah, but what if it doesn't? Unless we get like a 28 days later to 28 weeks later and stuff where it's just like grow, True, where maybe. it gets at the end of the season, it gets out. Oh, that would be cool. I oh, mean, wow, we're, we'll yeah. save that kind of stuff for predictions. Well, guys, we but, already yeah. said that that's, this is the, this is the prelude to the walking dead. So it kind of is. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Twist. 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 But, um, can we, can we move to, um, the whole thing about like with Doreen and now Sergio still don't trust this guy. Yeah, we can, we can talk about that. So, um, Doreen, so, uh, after this, Alan convenes with all of his doctors and he starts, he starts doling out the missions. He's like, listen, okay, we got a, we got about four hours until, uh, or six hours until the satellite comes online and we can send as much info as we have to Atlanta. So we need to get as much as possible. So he pairs... Uh, Sarah and Julia to work together to find a way to test all the people there for the disease. Yep. And he tells Doreen to uh, go figure out what's up with these monkeys. Um, and uh, first of all, <laughs> monkeys. Second of all, uh, Doreen is like, um, okay, great. Sergio is like, I need, I should come with you. And we're all like, no! And then and Doreen's Do like, and Doreen says, no, uh, yeah. I'll be fine on my own. And, and we're all like, like yeah! And then Alan's like, no, take Sergio. And we're like, no! Am I the only one that trusts Sergio? No. What? No way! I totally believe he's going to be the good guy. Why? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's, exactly. That's Sergio right there. Because he's, he's for the army before he's for Hatake. He's only working with Hatake because of... It's Hataki. They Hataki, keep, keep all right, Hataki, Hataki, whatever. Um, he's only working for Hataki to get the things for the government, but at the same time, he doesn't want Hataki to get his way. But he did stab a guy, I mean, in the last episode. I mean... Ends justify yeah. the means standard. Yeah, but like, come on, the guy was infected. Like, Yeah, but here's the thing, right? Who blew up the satellite dish? Yes. I thought it was Sergio. I saw we I saw army camouflage on that sleeve. Yeah, I yeah. assumed it, it was him. Kind of had to be, I think. I mean, I'm not saying he's going about it in the nicest way possible, <laughs> but I think we're gonna see him revealed as working towards a greater good. Right, but here's the thing, right? They were gonna use that satellite to call in the army, yeah. the people he's supposed to work for. Or what we've been assuming. We've been as well. I mean, yes, because he works for the army, but we still don't know like who the person is that like Hatake and him are working for. I guess. I don't. I don't know what's. I don't know. I can't trust him because I don't know what side he's. I don't know who's more equipped to deal with Arctic temperatures, Sergio or Fat Dan. Fat Dan. Because I kind of think it could even have been either of them. If it's Sergio, if it's Sergio, it leads me to believe that Sergio's working outside of the army's protocol. Like he's like an under black ops unit or something right. like that that's not supposed to exist. Maybe. I mean, this is a station that has no laws. It's like outside of everyone's jurisdiction, so yeah. that would yeah. make sense. Or Fat Dan, if it's like, I mean, he's definitely Hataki's guy. Yeah, but so, at the know. same time, again, and it's just because I'm a very visual person and I totally did zoom, like, zoom in on the fact that it was like camouflage on the sleeve of the glove of whoever hit the remote control. And, and Fat Dan is always wearing black. And I hate the fact that you guys have gotten in my head because I always say Dan and now I'm saying Fat Dan. I'm yep. a horrible person. Yep. No, Thank you. I really, but really hope we get him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. But we don't see the face of the person who blows it no, up. No, we don't. Which the camo, I think, is a red, could be a red herring. But okay. but why why because why not show the face though? Yeah, like, why show if us? If they're a gonna jacket? make it so obvious that it's that it's Sergio, right. why not show his face? Um, another idea that you guys haven't thrown out there is that there's other people in the area, like like the others. Yeah. If this is a lost type, scenario. no, not like that, but more like there's a there's bunch of other, other on agents the base. at the base yeah. that are working for. Hataki and yeah. working or working with Sergio that we don't know about yet, or a whole other outside organization. They, they're yeah. in the base, but they could be. Yeah. I mean, there, there's one thing about like the Red Scare and all that thing is that 
everyone has spies everywhere. Yes. Right. So like you never know whose side anyone is on. Because this is this is a facility that is developing a cure that can cure everything anywhere. Right. And yes. everyone from around the world, every government has their own hands in it because they have scientists in it. Yeah. So you never even know what country, let alone what like government facility they would be working for true and i am i also point out too that again like what you said we don't know there could be other characters that haven't been introduced yet it could be more people that are working with sergio also from the army possibly that's why we saw camouflage on the sleeve maybe we just don't know who this person is yet because they haven't been introduced there's like tons of theories to go on and one this. more i'm going to throw out there is that it could have been H hataki himself yeah because yeah. it had to have been mm -hmm. if it's not an outside source that's like wiretapping them it had to have been one of the four people in that room when he said when the satellites come back online i'm going to call the army blah 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 yeah it had to be one of those people i'm going I'm to point something out with that though with hitake though i wouldn't think it would be him only because he seems so concerned and again sorry for skipping ahead a bit but he seems so concerned that julia was going to be stuck in the base uh the, that dark area and it cut off the communications and like I feel like he was just so concerned for her, knowing if he blew up the satellite, it would cut everything off. Like, I thought his concern for Julia would be, like, more... It, it was a little too much for him to, like, screwed her over and cut off the communications. But, but if he thinks the army is going to screw it up worse... It's, it's a matter of, of wondering if, is, if he's crazy enough with his plan or how he feels for Julia. But Let's anyway. Let's forget, he's glowy eyes, man. I know. Yeah. Well, he, he also mentioned in this episode his board of directors. Oh, yeah. Shadowy <laughs> board of directors <laughs> who are supporting his, uh, supporting his efforts out here. Learning about Sodra, big deal. Oh, yeah. Did, um, they, did they say anything about the infected communicating with each other? No. no okay. I don't think so. Because... At the same time, it also could have been an infected person that cut it off to take the base down. Something like that. True. Um, what was I going to say? Another way to look at it is that the communications were taken down regardless of the satellite, but by people who are freaking out because of the infection or somebody who is, has people who they care about locked inside of the quarantine zone and wants to cut off communications so they can rescue them without people reporting them. So that they have to them. open it. Uh, yeah, or, I mean, or just so that it has to be open. There's so many possibilities because they didn't show their face. That's right. why I love this show. There's just so many theories. Yeah. The discussion topics are endless. <laughs> they give you just enough. Just Good. enough. I don't make theories. Yeah. I make facts. Yeah. All right. Yes. I like all of Stephen's wild theories. I want you to keep them coming. Hey, hey. Yes. They're not as wild fast theories. As they're wild facts. Okay. They're wild, wild horses stop all right we're gonna take a quick break talk about itunes Woo. folks thank you so much for downloading this podcast watching it on youtube streaming it on all your favorite devices you rock go you after buzz tv has the best fans in the entire world bar none i will get into a bar fight bar none to defend your honor i will i want to see it I w I hate. Well, he never we'll said he'd win. He just said he'd get into it. <laughs> I said I'd get into it. Just thinking that. Yeah. No, I would probably lose, but I would lose for you. And isn't doesn't that matter that much more knowing that I wouldn't win? Zach couldn't get in a bar fight. He's got the Nathan Drake shirt on, man. Like nobody's yeah. going to mess with that. No one's going to mess with Zach. He's Look, I just, I am what I am. He's oh, what, a big because deal. I'm wearing flowers and I'm a girl, I can't take anybody on. Oh, no, Thanks, she could take people on. She's wearing combat boots under this table. I am. But <laughs> here's, I the, here's the deal thing. Here's the, here's the deal, guys. Here's the fans, guys. Here's the fans <laughs> deal. Listen, we need your help. Uh, this is a free podcast. We do it for free. After Buzz TV puts out 60-plus shows a week. Crazy amount of content, all free. You lend, line it up end-to-end. -end, it could wrap around the world three times, and you wouldn't even have to make a sweat. I think that that's true. I know it's not actually a physical <laughs> thing, but if you lined it all up, if it was physical, it would wrap he around the world did the test several, several this. times. He checked. I did, he with did. jellyfish for free. and monkeys for free. And uh, here's the thing. We need your help. After Buzz TV, we do this thing for free. What can you do to help us? I'll tell you right now. You go to iTunes. Only takes a second. Give the show a rating. Uh, if I were to throw out a rating, I'd say five stars is probably fair. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, be yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Do the rating that makes sense for you. And then leave us a review. Let us know if we're doing a good job. If I say monkeys too much, if I could say monkeys more. <laughs> these are important facts that go into the making of this program. And it also helps us get ranked on iTunes, get ranked at AfterBuzz. We want to be the number one Helix show on itunes the number one show we get it let's do some shout outs shout outs uh you also get a fun shout out if you review us on itunes do it uh jb 97.9 writes out a must listen flat out the best podcast about this show matt l is the best hosted after buzz oh he spelled <laughs> steve wrong 
Thanks, <laughs> JB97.9. You're cool. You All have right. no idea what you just did to his ego. Yeah. Um, someone named Steuven. Steuven wrote a... Uh, man, this podcast is biasly good. This is interesting. Uh, I may be biased saying this. But this is a really great Helix podcast. I don't know what the bias could be. It's almost infectious, the way it grabs you. It really leaves you stranded in amazement. The hosts are cool as an Arctic base. Some real black-blooded talent. Oh, my God. This is amazing. <laughs> I have no idea who could have written that. I have no idea who could have written that. I don't know anyone named Steven. Do you, Steven? Um... Next comment. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, love the Helix podcast from Pugface96, uh, Matt Lieberman, Stephen Lemieux, and their crew are the and best. And no, I won't spelling. <laughs> he does not spelling. Uh, and their crew are the best podcasters I've ever heard. And yes, I listen to quite a few. Huge compliment. Thank you. I'm a fan of their Sleepy Hollow podcast and was ecstatic to find out they're doing Helix and Almost Human too. As usual, their Helix podcast was both funny and insightful. With their podcast, I have to watch the show, listen to the podcast, then watch the show again to see the things that they caught that I missed. Then, just because it's entertaining, I listen to the podcast again. Great job, guys. Uh, shout out to Monkey are Awesome. Oh, God. Love the vibe <laughs> of the podcast plus Monkey Talk. Was that you? It was not me. Okay. <laughs> it was not me. I love that. Um... And Rosemary42, great show, great podcast. Loving Helix. Was very pleased to find a Helix podcast. I adore Matt and Steven. You make any show more entertaining. I think we need some Zach and Liz love. So maybe I feel really, really throw some yeah. away. I'm we're, we're gonna We're going to call you guys Lack. Or, or, Lack or oh. Ziz. Ooh. Ziz. Lack. Ziz, Ziz is Ziz grosser. Sounds, it sounds gross. It That's sounds grosser. I think we have to go with Ziz found, okay. sounds like what the black stuff is called. Yeah. Can we call the black stuff Ziz? Ziz? I'm down. All right. Yo, man, as I'm bleeding Ziz not... over here. Oh, God. Ugh. Gross. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, Cough I up some Ziz. Some... No, okay. Now we definitely... <laughs> now, it, now it's done. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, Julia coughs up some Ziz at the she end does. of this episode. At the she end does. of this episode. Let's... I just got infected and I Ziz in my pants. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. You. <laughs> no, I refuse to applaud. Everyone else is applauding. I say no. We need to go back to the topics at hand, okay? Um, Julia and Sarah are forced to work together on this test, and uh, things are tense to say the least. Julia does not trust Sarah at all, mm -mm. mostly because she's a young doctor and because she's horning in on, on her man, the man that she didn't even want. Yep. Okay. As she explained when Peter was in the bed talking yeah. about the she's relationship. She's having this like weird monologue to herself <laughs> about like, oh, seeing you brought back so many things that I was feeling. When I was with Alan, I just, I wasn't there myself. Was Which there. I have to ask you guys, because I'm not sure if I was watching it on, on demand. Was it jumpy? Like yeah. jump cutty? Okay. No, that uh, that's just this show. Yeah, they're trying to do that with some scenes, and it's really just kind of like annoying. They it, did it. Yeah. They did it in the first, the pilot. Yeah. I was trying to figure out if it was trying, if it was a theme, if there was like a, a common pattern, it's but the there's style. not. It's a style. It's the style of the show. It's, it's not. But it, the weird thing is, it's only in certain scenes. They don't do it all the time. It's like one scene per show, and that's it. And then you don't see it for the rest of the show. So it's kind of like it's weird, but you know. It's really it's hey, uh, director, you might need to cut up this monologue, but we only have it from one angle. Don't worry, it'll work. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's exactly what is it was. Is there actually any time or gap in space and time between her talking saying that no. sentence? No, no. With that one, I could have chalked it up to her being like infected and like so having her mind sort of play with. But there's like a two scene with Doreen and Sergio walking where it just starts jumping. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's about it's that. it's the style. I don't mind it that much. I mean, they're just they're it just they're trying to be cool. I don't think it's a style. Well, if it is a style, it looks like a mistake, and that's the problem. Holy shit. Epiphany, guys. Sorry, I know we turned the language knob down, but like, Steven, no, crank it back up. What's your ep epiphany, bud? Um, okay, so Hataki has survived Sordra. I thought I thought survived Sodra. Oh. Sodra. Oh. And okay, that's I not. You were that's not say even. The camera guy that's, was infected. That's not even the big epiphany. The infection is Sodra. Oh. It has a seventy-five percent mortality rate. Oh wow! You so just, basically, Pe Peter's becoming what Hataki is. And oh wow! Otherwise, people die, or they become something or else. Or they become monsters. I, I really feel like that. Like we can't even do predictions now because that's just like that. I 
I don't know. Like, like this is this is Hitaki's. Like there's probably a control group, oh and yeah. this is how he did it. He separated people because a, it probably he probably knows who's infected. He probably separated them a certain way using his manipulations. Wait, whatever. Who was already infected before the CDC even got there? Hitaki took Sodra himself, right? And he's already been through these whole stages and everything. He's done with it. Then why is everyone shocked at how everyone else is looking? He did this all in private and no one saw? Yeah, he yeah. had to have some close he people like no watching one else? his, yeah. his well, loose process. Loose ends, guys. Fat, fat Dan. This Fat is Dan. Guy, this is the kind of guy yeah, who ties Dan up loose ends. Oh, maybe Dan knows. I mean, on it. You know, I like it because at, at the very beginning of the show, in the first scene, we see two out of three people die. Peter yes. is just barely hanging on. 75% in three people, so what? you could say one survives. But um, we see... Uh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, Liz. No, that's cool. <laughs> Sorry. I, I feel like I, I can't see you when you start talking sometimes. I feel bad for talking. I don't people. know. I feel like that's a very <laughs> cool theory, but at the same time, I just, I, I can't buy it. I feel like... What about that guy, uh, Felipe? I'm sorry. You know, Stephen, you have a very French sounding last name. Is it is it Duchamp? Is it, that it guy? Duchamp? Duchamp. Duchamp. I just like saying Philippe it. Duchamp. Philippe Duchamp. Yeah. So like, okay, so we don't really know much about all the other characters that are playing more minor roles in this. Like, uh, you know, the doctor, the woman doctor who got infected. Um, what was her name again? Uh, Sule Dr. Suleimani. Suleimani. And then the bearded guy who I believe his name was Dr. Bryce. So Dr. Bryce is like hacking away at that door and then this Felipe like guy comes person. out. Oh yeah. Felipe. Well, it's Felipe is with an F. Felipe. I know. And my that's bad. when they're Hispanic. My, okay. Well, I, Felipe. We are in Los Angeles. That is what I'm used to. Anyway. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, he seemed very suspicious, you know, before we actually were introduced to what Sodra is. He definitely, he, he's holding stuff back about what so Sodra is. Um, and I think I, here's, here's a big question. Is the entire reason that they're at the facility just to make Sodra? Well, there's got to be a little bit more to it because, I mean... Because uh, the army wants a weapon. Yeah. We just, then they had just, level R with the controlled fusion before. So. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, just if we look at the taglines, like play God, pay, pay the consequences. Pay the price. Yeah, pay the price. Um, I think that there's going to be something more... They're going for something more extreme than just curing viruses. Right. Mm. I um, feel like it's like a, a forced evolution. I know where this could go if they try to take it into more seasons, but I'm afraid because when I first saw the show, I was like, better not make it. Oh, he's a Cylon. Oh, he's a Cylon. Everybody's a Cylon. <laughs> no That's one's I, a Cylon. I know, but I'm just saying like the whole thing like, oh, you'd like if Hataki is this thing, it's like nobody knows. But then if more people end up being this thing and then we don't know they're this thing and they pin it turns into the Cylon defection. Yeah. So but anyway, what I'm saying is, is right now, imagine this creature is its own being and it has its own consciousness. And so what if Hitake oh, is the are consciousness? Are you talking about so Sodra? Sodra has, hmm. it's a 100% cure-all because it changes your genetics into something else that's immune to viruses. Right. So it turns you into something else. But that something else has its own consciousness. So let's say Hataki is not Hataki. He's now this new consciousness that is trying to create more of itself. So through this Arctic base station, Hataki the scientist originally created it. But now it, with all of his memories, is trying to make Dr. more Duchamp of them. Dr. Duchamp created it. Okay, but yeah, both of Do we you know, know that, though? We don't know yeah. that for a fact. That's, what, that's why Dr. Bryce is beating down his door. He's the guy, he's the inventor of Sodra. He might, no, he might be working on it or know more about it, but they never right. actually said I'm that. I'm just going to throw this out right now. Am I the only person here who thinks that the virus and Sodra are two different things at this point? Or does everyone else think they're the same thing? I think they're two parts of the same coin. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. I'm saying Sodra is the code name for something that's being worked on as well. But at the same time, I think that the, the infection itself is maybe an early prototype of Sodra or something. And Hataki's looking to turn more people into his organism. Yeah. Because they gave it a name. They wouldn't have given it a name. Although, Vectors. Vectors yeah. are the new Cylons. No, oh ve vectors are just, it, it's what Alan is calling uh, the people. They're it's infected and spreading the infected disease. Infected and spreading the disease. But that's actually a CDC term. That's not just oh, like it? a sci-fi term. Yeah. yeah. All it's right. Well, uh, Hataki's a vector. That's my prediction. And I'm calling it for the rest of the season, man. Okay. Stick, right. stick to your Although, guns. Can I just say, though, if that is true and he's now lost all sense of consciousness, like, I can't wait. I'm sorry to see the obsession he has with Julia. Like, I, I, and Especially if. Especially now she's sick. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And then that's like, as I stated before, he was like super concerned that she's locked down there. 
And, and, you know, when we were talking about the satellite being blown up, who could it be? And, you know, again, if, if your theory is right, then is it, you know, is there still some human trace of him that, you know, it loves Julia? And if so, what the hell is the connection between Julia and Hitake? Because as far as we know, they were complete strangers before she came here from the CDC. That's what I'm saying. I think that they, I think that he has all of, he is Hitake, but he's also this new thing. Yeah, but why would the virus like fall in love for a human? Anyway, it's a lot, it's up in the air. Well, if Peter is also a part of this consciousness, or even just a small part of him is in, oh, incorporated yeah. into this mm -hmm. consciousness, then that's enough right there to they delve it into Hitaki's brain. Yeah. And Hitaki's another, the control point. Another thing would be, I mean, what is the most captivating part of the infection you've seen with Peter? Tell me. Captivating when he when he when he runs at you. What do you look at when you see Peter's face? His, his eyes? throat. His eyes. His throat. With eyes. You look at it, yeah. you see his throat, and you see his eyes, because yeah. his eyes are changing. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Hitaki's eyes are changed. The eyes oh, are a going yes. theme throughout the series. They're very red, and then the pupils are much bigger. Or not the yeah. pupils, the, the iris. Yeah, and as, as if, I don't know if you guys know this, but any trauma to the brain or brain surgery and things like that can actually change the color of your iris. There are people who are born with green eyes, but after a surgery, they have one blue, one green. Like, things can change mm. like that. That's huh. chromia. That is interesting. All right, I'm going to throw out my version of this theory, because I really like it. We're totally so, on a tangent, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that what we're going to see is that the, the virus, whatever it is, yeah. was being used as seen as a weapon, a way to, like, a superhuman, super soldier serum yeah. of, of sorts. And Sodra is the, but they couldn't control it. It was getting out of hand with mm -hmm. Peter and all that. But Soldier is the control. It's the clamp down to keep it on track. But for whatever reason, I, I get the feeling that Sodra was invented long before uh, the virus was used in any capacity. I feel like Sodra is something that's been there far longer because it, this is the first case of like an outbreak, or at least it's it the first case be. of an outbreak. Right. But like, the, we still so you're saying a controlled than, test. Of, yeah, I mean, well, we still have to establish why they're in Antarctica, other than the international laws thing. We can also go back to the scene where, I mean, we kind of skipped over this a bit, um, where Doreen and Sergio... About to say that. All right, yeah. Monkey's missing. Monkeys. So first of all, we can go on about can, and speculate where we think the day a monkey went. Hataki doesn't want them to find the monkey. Well, that's what Sergio said. And at this point, I still don't trust Sergio. So what I think Sergio, Sergio says, took the monkey. I think Sergio took it. I think I think that the monkey that was not frozen might have had different results than the frozen monkey sickles that they got the monkeys from. Which uh, I mean, we theory. can call them monkey pops. Monkey pops are cool. I like monkey, monkey pops. pops. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, <laughs> monkey pops available now. So uh, yeah, no. So I think maybe maybe uh, there was a reason for that. Again, I don't trust Sergio. I think Doreen is showing that she is much smarter and she's much more than just like the comedy relief in the fact that she doesn't trust. I'm Sergio. just gonna throw this out there. I think she might be the best actor on the show. <laughs> <laughs> she's really good. She's good. She's great. I, do like yeah. her. I love Pam. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, and then they they do that thing, and and you know, she puts it in the incubator, and like immediately it just like well, she gives it a growth agent. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, and, and and then they put it in the incubator. No, she didn't even get it to the incubator. Well, they said incubator. They yeah, said they, they said she was going to put it in for a few she, hours. Yeah, she gave oh. it a growth agent, and and was putting it in the incubator oh, so that it could grow. It was in the incubator. To. Oh, it was yes. in it. Yes. Okay, that was but that but it was thing. it was the growth agent plus heat that caused this massive growth. It, within seconds. Within so, seconds. Um, Which, why they're gonna, in Antarctica. Yeah. Oh God, you guys are gonna hate me. Evolution, the movie. Didn't see I don't know. What about it? Evolution, the movie. They what have They have this, this like virus thing from the alien and the heat makes it evolve rapidly and then they blow it up and it makes it, turns it into this giant thing. Oh God, I do <laughs> remember that now. Oh. I still have never seen Evolution. <laughs> Oh. I mean, Isn't that so evolution. similar though, Zach? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to go rewatch Evolution now, which is totally a good yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah. You should send that to Orlando Jones. He might say, made OJ laugh. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I hope um, so. so we got about 10 minutes left. So, Matt, you get us back on track. Okay. So, here's the thing we got Sergio with his own agenda. Doreen, he, what, he, what he accomplished there, Doreen's not sharing her information with Alan. And I'm just, at this point, I'm just like, come on. You're not that stupid. Yeah. Why wouldn't you share this with Alan? Tell him not to share it with Hataki. 
I, I don't get that part either because, you know, she looks at him. She's like, I really don't trust you. But when you're right, you're right. And it's like, what? Like, what? remind me again, because I don't think I, I kept note of it. Why did Sergio say it was a good idea to keep it to themselves? Because it, it, if it got word, if word got to Hataki, and this is all based on the hypothesis that he stole the monkey, mm -hmm. that he would shut them down and make it even more difficult for them to do their experiments. Yeah, or to get out, probably. Or to get out. Uh, but that's all based on the hypothesis that it was Hitaki who stole the monkey. Yes. I, I will say, though, that I feel like if you do tell Alan, he's going to go right to Hitaki and be like, what's up with this? Yeah, he's oh, yeah. kind of an idiot. Yeah. It, hey, he is a brilliant doctor who's worked miracles But before. he's by the books. That's yeah. his problem. He is. He's, he's you a... told me that this was going to be... I'm sorry, I'm doing Batman voice for Alan again. <laughs> you told me that this was going to be... Open book. Transparent. Transparent, that's it. <laughs> Full transparency. Full transparency. <laughs> I don't have throat cancer. Um, oh, God. I've got this in my throat. Just make it yeah. softer, though. Like, so. Yeah. No. Can we um? Can we talk about what's going on with Sarah and her hand? Yeah. You know, it was really funny. I was just making a joke. I was like, yeah, she's hypoglycemic. But I mean, I wonder if she's they. Sh she took off. That's right. Cause she took off her shirt, and there was this huge scar over her oh, spine. Yeah. yeah. It's with it scar. looked almost and like a centipede. It like crawled up inside her. I think. Well, maybe. What if she just had some sort of surgery, and she's got some sort of illness, and she. I mean, I. She just has been keeping it from people because she doesn't want it to ruin her career with the yeah. CDC. Yeah. I mean, it could be something as simple as that, but maybe in turn, this is something that might benefit with the virus. I mean, her being sick, sick person, virus, she, don't know how that'll react with it. Don't is know. she a plant at the CDC? Could mm -hmm. she be working for what, what let's say, Whoever Sergio is working for, they could both be agents of the same organization. We're getting wild. Okay. I don't here. think so. Well, I'm going to shut that but, down. But, 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 but based on that, though, she did create the uh, thi the serum with the jellyfish thing, right. she and then all of a sudden it didn't work. Well, she screwed up. She, I, yeah. Okay. You know. it, two things to add to that, because I wasn't really thinking that, but then, okay, two things. Serum didn't work. Yeah. Worked and then didn't work. Worked and then didn't work. Um, and. Do you ever see people eat or drink on this show? You don't. Nope. But she very clearly poured herself a glass of water and drank water. And water is another theme of this show, so that is obviously something important. Since when is water a theme we of this assumed. show? Since the very first scene of the entire series, here, have some water. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah pumping the water with the... Uh Iron okay, thing. fine. I'm recognizing. I'm trying to think if pattern. we really haven't seen anybody eat or drink. Um, I mean, yeah. I don't. Th I can't they, think of any they scene. Been. Yeah. There was there was mention made of supplies down on level R. There's a week's worth of yeah. food and water. It could just yeah, be not the, even fat Dan. Could just be 24 <laughs> syndrome, where you're like yeah. you just ignore. Yeah. Yeah. Basic bodily functions. It's like, functions. gee, guys, I haven't seen anybody go to the bathroom yet. I wonder what's up with that. Well, we did see somebody pass out on it, so I think we're still safe on that. Well, that, yeah. was, that was a shower. That was a shower. That was a shower. I mean, it's you different. guys don't go to the do bathroom you, in the shower? Yeah, do you want to watch them go to the bathroom? Is that no, what you're asking not for? Not particularly. No. I was not asking. I was just making that was a point Liz asking. that... Not asking. I'm not the weirdo here. I'm just making a point that sometimes maybe it's just not necessarily a thing just because we haven't seen them eat or drink. I know. I'm just saying, I just like to point out themes in shows. And water is a yeah, theme and those. eyes are a theme theme and things like that and now we have this theme of morality with the doctor with if, yeah. uh, if something kills something he's fine with it, but if he kills it it's different and i really didn't like this scene you didn't like the monologue no the mon not not the monologue i'm talking about when everyone's in that room and then they just haphazardly say oh yeah she escaped she's killing people and the guy's like She's killing that was, people! That was Dan. Dan ruined that. He came up and he said, hey, the doctor escaped on the floor level and she's like, kill like I think that was just a dumb Dan mistake because the first thing I said was, damn it, Dan. Yeah, but say what you will about Fat Dan. He is not careless about this stuff. He is like, he's the most, he's probably the most cautious person <laughs> In there, I'm just he's not keep about it what he. He doesn't have time to watch calories because he's watching your ass. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but not uh, his. Yeah, not his. He hasn't seen it in a long, long time. But you can. But see everyone it. else has. Oh God, I feel so terrible. No, don't feel bad. <laughs> he is a bad guy. Although, hey, okay. Somebody has a gun now. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, well, Steven's happy. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't like that there was just like so many people. Like it was a frustrating scene. Like, you know, when, but like, last oh, the crowd of people. I can't. <laughs> I kept making really, actually, I was making fat Last Dan episode, you that. were upset that there were no guns. No, I'm happy gun. that there's guns. And I'm happy that, that uh, Mr. Mr. Farragut 
shot the guy. Well, then he's just the, the girl. most Doctor. epic shot ever. Yeah. <laughs> Considering Crack like he's shot not right in the brain. Yeah. Jeez. Right between the eyes. Julie's just the like Walking Dead. Yeah. <clears throat> creeping out and she's like oh what's going on oh she's eating that person that's cool well no it's the moment that the virus takes hold yeah you know and then she coughs up the black blood and she realizes what she is see we have seen people eating on this show yeah each other (laughs) (laughs) yay how much time do we have? Uh, like five minutes. <laughs> okay, let's we go into this. predictions. Go into predi- well, I mean, this whole show's I been know, great. I let's know. Just, <laughs> let's really quickly just make sure we didn't forget anything just like from the episode because there was a lot of... Um, they bring back the Nordak or whatever it's called. Also, 43 are, there are infected. Narvik, Narvik, Narvik A and Narvik B. They talk about that again. 43 yep. people are infected, which is almost one third of the base. They which is point. not true. Because the the test doesn't well, work at, yeah. at that point at the b- b- known people. What right. they're doing with that, telling us that, yeah. is that it lets us know that well now there's 44 because Julia's there. Mm-hmm. There's 44 people locked away, and that's telling us the numbers on each side. Got yes. it. So that's kind of just the information. That's a sly way of giving us that information. Right. So there's like 80 some people hanging out in the rest of the base who uh, all could potentially be infected, and now none of them are aware that they're they could with people. be. Yeah, that there's any danger in the base. They think that they have it contained, but frankly, they don't, and everyone's at risk. Damn. Now that's dun, tension. Dun, Basically, dun. until we get one more breakout upstairs, yeah, no one's going to know. Right. Nope. So probably for the next couple of episodes, we're going to have uh, we're going to have this division between the people downstairs and the people upstairs, and w- I think we're going to learn a little bit more. Or I mean, this is my prediction. I hope that we learn a little bit more about the psychology of the people who are infected. I want the vectors to start talking. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. I want well, to see more intelligence behind the infected aside from just Peter and maybe possibly Hitake. Uh, and I think, you know what, just a prediction, but if Julia is infected, I think she's going to be another one of the people who are like your the After Buzz TV predictions. We'll just get into them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Zach. Um, well, I mean, I really want to know who they are. They made me do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's, it's Hataki. I think it's the infection. Or it's itself. If it is Hatake, which yeah. it probably is. It's either Hataki or it's the voices that come with being infected. Yes. I think what's gonna happen is Julia's gonna keep her sanity for a while because we don't honestly know how long Peter was infected before it started like really ravaging him. And everyone's different, as yeah. we know the was it Solomonti or whatever? The doctor who was infected. Whatever. Sulamani. Yeah, it took her a few days it seemed like. Yeah. So I think Julia is going to figure out about Hataki yeah, or while she's is. down in level R because, you know, they've sealed off level R, but that doesn't mean they can necessarily not go other places below that. So I feel like there's probably more in it level R. It has its own ventilation system. That, well, yeah, but I wanted to also bring up the fusion generators. Right. Like, those exist, so yeah. they oh. wouldn't have added that in for no reason. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. They can probably detonate one of those and get yeah. out of there. Yeah, because they did mention the scorch marks on the doors. Mm-hmm. Are the so. are the generators still there? They say they, they look like they were that ripped out of the wall. Yeah, they make a point that the lab hasn't been active in five years. Five years, yes, but that doesn't mean that somebody couldn't have been careless with things. Or I mean, they're all a bunch of doctors. They're all smart people. Somebody can figure something out. Yeah, they're all smart people, and they all act like trapped mice Shh, when you yell. It wouldn't be a show dead. if they were that smart. Hey, man, okay. when people get afraid for their life, they do crazy things. I know. They just got to run from the ziz. Yeah. Man, yeah. Oh here's and, and uh, here's one question for the panel: What's going to happen when all the monkeys finally defrost oh and come back? That's they're, my they're, big. You're question. gonna you're gonna make one of them your pets. Well, yes. the, the recipe calls for setting your oven to bake at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and then uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Frozen yeah. monkey souls. Get them in your freezer aisle. Yes. It's All like right. Indiana Jones. Chilled monkey print. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's. That uh, that's I it. think that's. I think we're wrapping it up. Uh, Liz Rish Maui, where can the people find you? Hey guys, Liz Rish Maui, you can find me at, on Twitter, at Lizzie Maui, that's L-I-Z-Z-Y-M-A-W-Y. Follow me, come on, I'm lonely, let's talk. All right, Zach Wilson. <laughs> uh, you can find me at that Zach Wilson on Twitter and Instagram, and you can also catch me on the Grim, Almost Human, and Archer after shows. Sweet, Stephen Lemieux. You can find me here being a total goofball on the Helix After Show, as well as t- tomorrow night, the Sleepy Hollow finale. I know. It's going to be an hour after show if we start on time, and it's a two-hour <laughs> finale, so get ready for that shiz. I oh mean, yeah. ziz. I uh, mean, whatever. You guys got to tweet <laughs> us with hashtag ziz. Hashtag ziz. That is the newest Z-I- thing. Is it Z-I-Z? Z-I-Z. 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 Yeah. Sweet. All right, folks. 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M A T T L I E B E R M A N. You can also find me here on AfterBuzz TV on kind of everything. I'm gonna <laughs> throw some stuff out there. Don't know if I'm gonna get it all. You can find me on Justified, Almost Human, Marvel's Agents of Shield, the finale of Sleepy Hollow tomorrow, finale of Betas also this week. Uh, we got uh, we got Sherlock two more weeks. Uh, Lost Girl starting up soon. Doctor Who Classics coming back this winter. Uh, hopefully, anyway, and uh, more good stuff on the horizon. Peace, love, and monkeys, everybody. Love you. <laughs> good night. Oh, is that it? Yep. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Peace, love, and monkeys. That was my sign off. Our mics are still live, though, Matt. Oh, wow. That that's might not nice. be it. Good job. But that was going to be it. That was going to be it, but it wasn't it. Can I say <laughs> it again? <laughs> you can say it again. Peace. Monkeys! 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 From executive producers Maria Manunos, <laughs> Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. See you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.